politics and politicians and words and actions and every other thing leads towards 2019. And the road to 2019, how smooth and rocky will that be for the contenders or some who would ordinarily be termed as the pretenders by some analysts, but again, we're likely to look at the smooth ride or the rocky ride towards 2019. Joining me now is Austin Ogana. He's a president, online publishers association of Nigeria and also the publisher of The Whale. Good to have you Thank join you. us, uh, Austin. Thank you very much. Uh, glad uh, to have you back in the country. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's look at issues because we have a potpourri of issues uh, now leading up to 2019. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about what is happening in the PDP. And uh, first, uh, the PDP was a little bit dormant and silent, but now we're getting to see the PDP, you know, raving and, you know, gathering momentum. Let's take it from there and see uh, the actions that led to the PDP getting this gusto all of a sudden. Um, thanks for having me on your show again. Um, we'll start, I'll just start the conversation by agreeing with you. Um, I think the PDP uh, seems to have the momentum coming out of what happened, um, you know, shown on on Saturday, you know, in a very close election, an election that we didn't even give the uh, delegate candidate a chance. Um, after the PDP lost um, the general election in two, 2015, um, the party had over the years tried to build itself back, and um, we never. G I was one of those that never really gave them a chance until the big blow uh, until what happened in Oshun. Uh, but give that as it may, I think the party still has a lot of work to do. It's still not, not, not there yet. I think they still have a lot of challenge and I think it also uh, gives the APC uh, an opportunity to put its house together. Because if you ask me, I'll say, uh, I'll say the party did not manage its victory in 2015, well, you know, the party has um, has allowed itself become its own enemy, its own opposition, especially with the defections in the National Assembly and all the chaos that the party has had to deal with. Um, so, in the long run, we expect to see um, a very interesting election year. Hmm. You know, we're all excited about it. There'll be upsets, of course. Now, I, I'd like to pick up from where uh, you, you said the ruling party became its own opposition. Let's look at what has happened in the National Assembly and how the leadership went and it was a shared form of leadership style they had initially. Mm -hmm. uh, getting to see for instance in the Senate you had the, a the APC at then as the Senate President mm -hmm. and uh, the PDP as the Deputy Senate President and uh, when you say the, the party was unable to manage its victory, what Thing, you know, do you think they did wrongly to have uh, caused this defection we saw in the National Assembly, specifically in the Senate? Um, you know, I'll call a spade a spade. Um, after President Buhari won the general elections, and um, and it became clear that the All Progressive uh, Congress would be the dominant party in the in the National Assembly, I think it was time to show leadership which he didn't show at that time. He said he was open and willing to work with whoever emerges as, um, as, as Senate President, as you know, major leaders in the National Assembly. But apparently, um, the, the party itself had, um, had other plans. They, they did whatever they did. They did their own zoning. They had their own internal zoning arrangement. But apparently, uh, I'll say because of lack of leadership, especially with what uh, with the president's body language, because usually if you don't set the tone, you know you 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 open up, you know the the forum for other leaders. So in other words, he missed a chance. He there. missed a chance to control the process because if he had said, you know, if he had had a conversation with all those that were interested in occupying the office, your politics is all about give and take negotiations, and let's assume just for the heck of this conversation that. Maybe um, Saraki and um, 
um, Undume, or one other person had indicated interest and they had talked about it and had that micro conversation where the whole process is managed, I think we wouldn't have had the chaos that we had at the National Assembly because immediately Saraki and Co did what they did to emerge. You, you saw that that was where the party's problems actually started and the party still has not recovered because there are people in APC today that are still very unhappy People like Sheo Sani are unhappy. People like Magnus Abe are unhappy with the way the party has conducted or is going to conduct, conduct its primaries that, of course, technically shut them out. But I don't know why the party is not doing direct primaries across board. If you do direct primaries across board, you save yourself a lot of problems. You allow the party members choose their leaders but when you go and you know opt for for indirect primaries what, what you do is you know you are giving a clique of people the powers to choose who represents them in a major election you know so the APC itself needs to do a lot of work and until they fix the problems that they have and I don't think Kushomali its national chairman you, he's going about <clears throat> dealing with the issues the way he ought to deal with it. I think he's actually you know, compounding problems instead of trying to fix it with his approach to the problem. We'll, we'll come back to the APC because uh, you, you, I think you, you, you hit it uh, when you said, well, they haven't <coughs> been able to define what exactly they want uh, because uh, it would seem as if with some states, uh, uh, you, th th they have resolved for the direct <coughs> primaries, mm -hmm. why would some others, they have resolved to go with the indirect primaries. Mm -hmm. But still with the PDP, and uh, after uh, that movement, you know, call it, you know, the campees or people who cross the carpet, when they moved towards the PDP, we saw a lot of people, you know, indicating the interest uh, for the number one seat uh, from the party. Uh, time was when everyone thought the PDP uh, w didn't have more than just one or mm -hmm. two persons. What does this mean for the PDP? Well, now that we have we have Governor Tambul, we have Saraki, David Mack, we have a lot of people, uh, Sule Lamido, so many people now back in the PDP. Uh, what's the reading you get when you look at what's happening in the PDP? You know, like I said earlier, uh, the PDP needs to manage itself properly. Um, having these, these big weights as, as um, presidential candidates, you know, shows that the party is still vibrant. People will see an opportunity to, to use the party to excel politically. Mm -hmm. Um, with the likes of the names you just mentioned, Tambowal, Bukola Saraki, Atiku Abubaka, uh, Governor Don Kwambo, um, Sule Lamido, Kwakwanso, I think they're about 12 or 13 presidential candidates or rather aspirants. Mm. Um, you, you can tell that the party itself is actually feeling the pressure because um, in the news two days ago, we, we heard reports of um, of disagreements between the, the BOT chairman and the NWC on the issue of River State, you know, as hosting venue. Yeah, yeah, as venue for its convention. Um, that tells you a lot in politics. It means that a lot of things we've been hearing is actually coming to fore, that a governor like Nwike would rather prefer a Tambowal as candidate. And um, a man like, um, like like the BOT chairman who prefers someone like an Atiku, you know, so the party has a lot of um, issues to contend with mm -hmm. and um, its survival depends on how it manages its primaries, depends on how it manages the egos of all the aspirants because if the process is not free and fair, like I say, if it's not free and fair, you're going to have problems. And once you have problems, you find it hard to stand a chance against a president like Muhammad Buhari, who has come in, comes on very occultic followers. Do, do, do you think with all of this uh, that we see in the PDP, uh, is that making the APC take for granted so many things that they should have fixed, uh, you know, in 
their own camp, uh, looking at the number of candidates and perhaps awaiting the day that they will have their primaries. Because uh, I think looking at it critically, just after the primaries, we were likely to see you know, bickerings and complaints uh, sure. going by the number of people and the caliber of persons who are going for that uh, position. Yes, I tend to agree with you. Um, you know, if you, if you follow politics, if you follow um, congresses and primaries, there are always disagreements. You know, there are always disagreements. That's why, you know, I, I always converse for making it as free and as fair as possible. So that when people lose, they don't suck. You know, they know that they lost fairly and squarely. The, the, the APC, from what I'm seeing, will have challenges with its congresses, yes, no doubt. Will have challenges with its congress, with its primaries across several states. Um, but how it manages that process will determine how it survives at the local elections. I don't think, you know, the disagreements really will, will, will endanger the party at the presidential election um, because if you if you talk to people in the party they will really tell you that they have no problems with the president the president himself has opted to 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 do direct primaries he wants the people to vote in his election i know it's tactical so that if for instance a court <laughs> if for instance a court says that um, faction a is illegal or faction B is illegal, it jeopardizes his own ticket. So the best way is to allow direct primaries for his own election. So I don't think uh, most people that are aggrieved in the party have issues with the president. So give or take, they will back him for his election. But where the APC should actually watch out for uh, local elections, state elections, because we have people that are angry, they work for the opposition. It's that simple, that's how it works in politics. and. Um, you know, talking about local elections, we'll come back to some local elections and local problems, uh, you know, uh, that we have seen with some of these parties, specifically uh, the APC. I, well, I, 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 I'm not done yet with the PDP. I'm also trying to look at the venue, even though Governor Wiki has said uh, he wasn't the one who, who chose <laughs> th that venue. The same people who chose the venue, according to him, went behind to also say, well, they were against the venue. So, <laughs> looking at the venue and looking at what is not being said, because in politics sometimes mm -hmm. you try to listen to what's not being said mm -hmm. and it, it gets louder sometimes. What do you think will be the fear of these people or, is the f or are the fears of these people who are already, uh, you know, putting a question mark on the venue of River State being uh, the place chosen by the party? Okay, I'll take you back to the last... Um Congress that they did in River State. Uh, I'm sure you followed the chaos that that went before, yeah. during, and after. It was in Port Harcourt, Mwike's home turf. When it's your home turf, you it's easier for you to mobilize. It's easier for you to you know to deploy your resources. Politics is all about money and your ability to coerce and um, do things on your home turf, have access to the delegates. Um, if, if River State is, I mean, if he ends up holding in Rivers, he gives Mwiki the advantage. River State is probably one of the richest states in Nigeria in terms of monthly revenue from FAC. Um, that's a lot of leverage to play on. You have the delegates, you know where they are, you, could, you know the nooks and crannies of your city. You know how to reach them. You know where to camp them. You have access to them. You have more, more men on ground to hit the road running for you. So that's um, what I think, you know, is causing the resistance, especially when um, it's, um, I mean, from the open sources that we talk to you and, you know, and lies with, you find out that, that Mwiki himself, he has to come on TV and say he has no interest in the process. But every politician has an interest in the process, you know. And I believe that the leaders of the PDP, PDP themselves know where 
each and everybody stands. So that's why Mwiki is getting the kind of resistance that he's getting, because they saw him deploy resources during the Congress that returned Secondus as national chairman against the pushbacks from people like IBB and Co. and you know, some other politicians of note in the party. Um, so the belief that the same scenario may likely play out because you know our politicians really have no, have no shame. It's all about their survival and interests. So when you know, the home governor you know, rolls, out, rolls out his machinery, of course, you know, he will have very minimal resistance. So that's why he's um, having a lot of pressure you know, uh, from some sec sectors of the party wanting the, 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 the convention moved out of. So, so you know that when you talk about resources, a neutral place. when you talk yeah. about resources, how important is money in our <laughs> politics? <laughs> You saw what happened in Osho. You saw what happened in Ekiti. Uh, money has always been a part uh, and parcel of Nigerian politics. 80%, in my own opinion, of any election in Nigeria is, is about money. 20% um, um, of it is how you deploy it. Yes, um, and also depends on when you deploy it. It depends on how you mobilize your foot soldiers, how you use your resources. But if anyone tells you in Nigeria that elections are not all about money, they're not telling you the truth. Elections are all about money. If you're, if you're broke, you can't run elections. To even pick up the forms, presidential form was, for the, for the, APC, for the APC was 40, 40, 45. For, yeah, 45 million. For the governorship aspirants was 22.5 million. Where are you gonna get that money from if you're not, um, if you're not well to do in the society, so with the, the way the Nigerian political space has been set up, money plays a major role. And just when Nigerians thought uh, they were going to have, uh, you know, an alternative, uh, looking at the young people who uh, came up to say, yes, uh, let's see if we can actually be part of this. Is it any, you know, surprise for you that none of them uh, keyed into any of these uh, big uh, or existing parties. None of them, the, the young people, when we talk about not too young to run and they had the seal and the stamp asking them that it's okay for you to run mm -hmm. now. We didn't see uh, young Nigerians go into some of these uh, political parties. Yeah, yeah, it's sad because of this issue of Godfatherism, this issue of cabals, you know, running the parties. I don't think the two leading political parties are as, as open and as welcoming as other new younger parties that are trying to grow. Um, I'm sure there are young people out there because it's so easy for you to get into power if you ride on the back of the two big parties and the two big parties knowing what it is and not being run by people that are young. If you look at the, uh, Adam Tushomali should be in his 60s and Secondo should probably be in his late 50s or 60s. And if you look at the people, the, if, if, if you look at the people in the national working committees of the parties as well, I don't think you have young people like that, you know, running the parties. So it's hard, it's hard for, a young talk to breaking, and it's also easy for them to turn their backs. So that's why young people see the new parties as an avenue, but it's hard. It's going to be hard to fight against the big monies and the big interest. You know, those parties are just, I think those parties are going to die a natural death over time. Yeah. What the, the, the do you think of some of the candidates? Because if you say the parties are just going to probably die some kind of natural death, do you see some of these candidates, you know, you know, gravitating towards these two big or some of the existing parties? Because, for instance, SDP, uh, as we've seen in Ocean State, mm -hmm. seem to be coming up strong. Um, well, 
I still see SDP as a regional party. I mean, SDP is, um, is more of a southern, sorry, southwestern party. That's the party that's been led by um, um, the former secretary to the government of the federation. I can't remember his name, right? Ulufalaye, that's Ulufalaye's party, right? Um, SDP does not have the, the kind of money I, I don't think they have the kind of reach that the two uh, leading parties have, but they can start from somewhere. But you see, my problem with the new parties, and that's why I said I think they will die a natural death over time, because their emphasis is on the presidential ticket. No one is talking about grassroots. No one is talking about grassroots. You need to start from being from the words. Start from the words, build the party organically from the bottom. Fight for what seats, fight for local government seats, fight for House of Assembly seats. That's even taking it higher. Mm. Fight for House seats, fight for Senate seats, fight for House of Reps seats. If you do, if these new, these new parties, these young parties do this for four cycles, first four years, next four years, next four years, in 12 years, I'm sure they would have made an impact at the local level. Before you start talking of presidential election, to run a presidential election in Nigeria, you probably need five, ten billion. Where are they going to get it from? Where are they going to challenge President Buhari or Atiku Abubakar or Bukola Saraki? They don't have the money. They don't. So. <laughs> When you say they don't have the money, I don't know. I come back to the fad leading up to 2019. People coming up to say they're the ones buying the forms, the expression of interest <laughs> forms for uh, an incumbent. Whether you're a president, an incumbent, whether you're a governor, a senator, everyone seems to be having a group of persons somewhere who sit and say they have contributed money for you to buy the forms. That, that's a new one. It's all politics. Um, it's all politics. It's all, um, these are monies going back. Don't believe the story. Um, some of these monies are put together by benefactors of the politician. Those that have gotten contracts and what have you. Those that have benefited from the system. So I want to believe that the people that bought President Buhari's forms are probably contractors or people that have benefited from the system, either directly from him or via one of his henchmen, ministers or people around him, and they put the money together and they bought the form for him. No poor person, I don't think any poor person in this country that is struggling, especially, have you ever begged anybody for money in this, between, two, between 2015 and today, and they tell you, ah, for this Buhari government, People are hungry, you know. People are hungry because of the, the, the times. So I don't think, um, you know, people from the streets will just put their money. It's all politics. These are just their monies or monies from their cronies coming back into the system to buy the farms. I think when we, we'll, we'll, we'll go on a break, we'll, we'll yeah. come back, we'll, we'll bring this to, to the you know, zone of the APC, we'll talk more on the direct and indirect primaries because looking at what I have here, looking at uh, uh, how they have resolved to do this, for instance, in Abia State, it's going to be direct, Adamawa indirect, mm -hmm. Akwaibom direct, Anambra direct, Kwara indirect, Lagos direct, and you ask yourself, how did it come into all of this? By the way, we're still trying to get the APC spokesperson to come talk and expatiate more on these ones. But we'll come back, we'll talk more on local politics, specifically Lagos State. Stay with us. There's a home stretch here on Political Stew with Austin Ogana, the publisher of The Wheel and President Online Publishers Association of Nigeria. And we're looking at, well, 2019. Now, coming back, uh, looking at uh, some of these, uh, you know, we did say the APC has come up with, uh, uh, you know, uh, a document that you really can't just off the top of your head say this mm -hmm. is the way to go. Uh, they have decided to say, A, 
will go this way and B should go this other way. So the talk of direct and indirect primaries, specifically some states like Ogun State is direct primaries, Lagos State is direct primaries, some other states uh, in, uh, have it in direct primaries, and even Delta State, I think Delta should yeah, be in direct indirect primaries. As well, yeah. so, so one wonders uh, if you have some states that you have a lot of bickerings, you know, infighting, and you say uh, they should go for indirect primaries, and some to go for direct primaries. Do you, uh, well, as a journalist, smell a rat? Um, yes, I do. It's, um, you know, I think the, like I said earlier, I think Adam Zoshomali has not managed the ruling party properly, you know, from since he came into the party. Yes, he's done some things. He's tried to put the party straight, but um, on the issue of the Congresses of primaries and uh, he's been neither here nor there if you follow the news one day he wakes up he says it's direct primaries nationwide the next day he changes his position oh we'll do direct primaries in some areas and we'll do indirect in some areas and it's been changing and changing and changing and until some days ago i was talking to a fellow journalist and we we're talking about the whole thing and we the conversation was about um APC not having a clear model to conduct primaries with just a few days to the exercise until today when the party released a statement telling us where it has chosen to do direct and indirect primaries. And you know, I went through the list and I said to myself, looks like the party is setting itself up for chaos. Because in a state, my state, in a state like Delta, for instance, where there are two factions of the APC, I would prefer a direct primary model to protect the candidates. Or else show your might, show yeah, your popularity. Yeah, yeah, to protect the aspirants and to also protect the eventual candidate. Because if you have a state where you have parallel state leadership and a court rules, for instance, against a faction that you used its it's, it's delegates as, you know, for your Congress, that automatically invalidates that process. So the candidate, whether he wins or not, if he wins an election, in the eyes of the law, he doesn't exist. So APC loses that. I think it happened to them in Kano with CPC, when CPC did that. Yeah. yeah. So I think the same, so I would have preferred a model where in states where you have chaos, like rivers, like delta, where you have parallels, where you have disagreements, direct primaries. Let the gladiators go and let the people choose. Let the party people choose. Because when you do indirect, you're just putting your, your hands, your life in the lives of a few delegates, 3,000, 4,000, and that's where you need to spend all that money. That's where the money in politics comes in. You know, that's where they spend all that money for primaries. But if you do a direct model, just like a general election, people come, party members come and they vote and they choose who they want. So it depends on how they manage the process. Whether I see a lot of chaos, I see a lot of anger, I see a lot of people being shut out. And that's why I said it will be difficult for young people to break into these parties. Huh. Because if you have a young man that has put himself up, struggled to buy a farm, and you're putting his fate in the hands of delegates that you have chosen to arrive at a conclusion, those guys don't stand a chance. Because the delegate election is always teleguided to deliver, to elect a particular person or a particular or And particular nine out of ten, percent. and it seemed that almost uh, every delegate is uh, been given money. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so that's what really happens when you have a delegate system. So in those states where, the, the if you look at the list, I'm an experienced analyst. In those states where the party has chosen indirect primaries, they have agreed to delegate the process to make sure that certain people certain preferred people emerge. And in those areas where they've chosen direct primaries, mm -hmm. the leadership of the party has left the people of the party to choose whoever it is 
the what. So I really don't know the parameter, but in my own analysis, I think that's what the party You know, done. when you talked about rivers, you said it's a state like rivers, and you named another state. I was hoping that you were also going to mention Lagos State. Now, let's talk about Lagos State. If you look at that <coughs> list, Lagos uh, falls on the, the state that uh, the party has uh, asked that they go into direct primaries. Um, if you look at how, um, yes, you know, I've, I've, I followed Lagos, I followed um, the, the meeting of the leaders of the party mm. um, where they opted for direct primaries. L Lagos itself, you know, has its own problems, but I don't think Lagos is really factionalized like that because um, you just don't wake up and say, oh, this is it, I'm factionalizing the party. So I think that's what has happened in Lagos. The, the, the other faction is, is not, you know, is just there. I don't think they, they, they've been aggressive with their own APC. But at the same time, you know, choosing direct primary saves Lagos the trouble. I think Lagos is probably one of the most, Lagos APC is probably one of the most united APCs amongst the other states. So if they want to go the primary, their primary model, I think it works for them. But at the same time, you know, um, I, I just hope that, um, that the party is able to manage the outcome because you have um, Ambody and two others, Sonolu and uh, I think Hamzat. Hamzat. Yeah, that are the three main gladiators. And from what we've read and what we've heard from the grapevine, it looks like uh, Ambody has his hands pretty full. So um, the party just needs to manage the process. Because uh, definitely, w when you say the party <coughs> needs to manage the process, uh, th there's no doubt that after uh, that primaries, w by the way, the primaries will hold the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, there's likely to be people who will still be aggrieved. And that is where you say the party needs to show uh, some bite to be able to manage this. It comes back again to the national level. where You said Adam Soshomale has been able to manage the party to some extent, but on the aspect of uh, the primaries, mm -hmm. uh, he's not been able to do that pretty well. So the outcome definitely will be something that uh, may be all in their face uh, at the end of the day. Uh, does this, that is to come, mm -hmm. has any effect in what we saw in the last election in Ocean State? If you look at what happened in Ocean State, um, that was where we first heard about direct primaries. That was, Oshun was like the test uh, model for the leadership of the party to proper, you know, elect a candidate. And we saw how it turned out some of the, I, I didn't think it was a free and, and fair process. Um, probably because it was the first, I think it should, they could have managed it better. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the aftermath of it, they didn't manage well, because I think, um, I think his name is Adioti, the, 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 I think he's the ADC, the ADC candidate that, uh, that took one local government that APC should actually have won and won well. Um, so like I said, it still boils down to how they manage the process. Um, we saw the the result, we saw how the election turned out, that it didn't really turn out well for the APC. And not just because of how they managed their primary, but because the governor himself did not do very well. Like I heard he owed 34 months in salaries, and meanwhile he, he was awarding contracts to politicians. And um, this whole process, you know, all culminated in the in the dismal, you know, like I said earlier. You know, perhaps, perhaps, uh, I mean, let's, uh, I think now you're talking about salaries. How, how powerful is the civil service? Because in all honesty, you know, this is seen as believing. If you go to Ocean State, they have some of the best schools in terms of yeah, buildings yeah. and structures. Mm -hmm. 
the, the I, I think never b mm -hmm. seen before kinds of buildings and structures put in place. So it, it, the the aspect of salaries, which is very key here, which you pointed to, will mean that the civil service, uh, well, they didn't actually key into all of that. Um, you know, I'll tell you, um, in a state like Lagos, for instance, um, Lagos is a very cosmopolitan state. Um, you have the the public sector and the private sector. You know, they both work hand in hand to drive the state. So if you all work as salary, salaries in Lagos, we're not a big deal. Not, it's a big deal, but not as big as a deal like Oin, workers in Oshun, that is purely a civil service state. The economy is driven by government. If you owe in Bayelsa, or you owe in Ekidi, so what happened to Ayo Fayose? Ayo Fayose could not even deliver his, um, his, um, his candidate purely because of the way he treated workers. So paying salaries is key. You know, because these are the same people that will come out and vote for you. And you know how the Nigerian system works. Um, a man earns a salary, he gives some to his wife, to his grand, to his mother, to his cousins. You know, one person earns So the, the man money. who works is uh, more or less like the social security yeah, the social to security. a whole lot of people. Yeah, so if you don't pay that guy, you know, he's unable to distribute resources down and he's going to blame, blame the government and you want that guy and his family to vote the same government tomorrow. So that's what we saw in Ekiti, and that's what we also saw in Osho. You know, they are, you can get away with it in big states that are not, you know, dependent on government patronage, you know, to, you know, to drive the economy. But if you do it in small states where 80, 90 percent of the workforce are employed by government, you'll be in trouble. You know, so for me, yeah, uh, Governor Arik Bashola did a lot of work in terms of infrastructure, but he, he, he made a very big mistake by not carrying the workforce along. You must balance it because, I mean, if a man works for you, you must pay at the end of the month. You know, so the workforce is really very important. Civil, civil servants, public servants, so th these are the people that go out there to vote so as long as market women. This is, uh, well, the last week of September, yeah. and uh, some would think that maybe the movement is over. Do you think that mm -hmm. as we move towards 2019, we're still likely to see people move from uh, one party to the other? Um, there's a possibility that after the primaries... Of, of both parties? Yes, of both parties. You see realliances, you see uh, anger, you see, you see another form of defection. You have people that will, that will stay in the party and work against the party during elections. Yes. They, they, they stay back to they work stay, against the yes, party. Yes, yes. You will see it in both parties, in the PDP and the APC. If, if you look at how, how elections have been won and lost in Nigeria. If you follow the history of each cycle, you see this problem. You know, people forming alliances for one reason or the other because they feel that they've been, they've been shortchanged. Did, 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 did that happen during President Jonathan? Yes, um, I'm sure you had the cry that some people in PDP worked for President Buhari, who worked for APC. There were people in PDP that that did not defect, but stayed back in the PDP to do damage to President Jonathan. There are people like that, we had stories, I don't want to mention names, but we had stories that have been corroborated. So the same thing, I mean, it happens in politics every day. I mean, you can't really please everybody, but that's why I said it depends on how you manage the process. Because there'll be people that will stay back in the party, some will defect, some will stay, way to do the damage, finish the damage, and cross over. You know, some have come up to say President Buhari is one lucky president uh, because uh, as we move towards 2019, uh, Nigerians are yet to see 
uh, a very formidable you know, force uh, kicking against his presidency. Uh, do you share in that? Um, yes, I do, but I think once the main opposition party, because I don't think um, any other political party in Nigeria has the capacity to challenge either the APC or the PDP, I don't think so. So it's still about the APC so it's and still, PDP? It's, it's, it's still about the APC and the PDP. So it depends on who the PDP projects. PDP projects an Atiku Abubakar, you have an interesting race. In Bukola Saraki, you have an interesting race. In Rabi Kwakwanso, you have an interest, interesting race. Tambuwal, an interesting race. So it depends on who they put up. And it also depends on how they manage the process. Because at the end of the day, it still depends on how you manage the process. If you project a candidate that is strong, that has a strong appeal nationwide. I think you stand a chance against... You know, I had a conversation on the, on, on the program. Uh, yeah. Sorry to cut you yeah. uh, on political history with Honorable Farouk Ali Adamu, who said uh, President Buhari is a movement. Uh, and, and I said to him, I said, Konkunso is also a movement, and, uh, uh, which he also agreed. Mm -hmm. But now you mentioned Konkunso uh, as another... Uh, aspirant in the PDP. How formidable would a Konkonso be against uh, President Buhari, knowing for all that these two individuals, uh, especially in northern Nigeria, mm -hmm. have become uh, some sort of movement to their people? Yeah, I mean, if PDP, for instance, I'll paint a scenario, they're both from the same northwest. If PDP projects, if Kwakwansu emerges the PDP candidate, for instance, you have a very um, tough election in the Northwest, where, which is their own, own, own senatorial zone, sorry, which is their own region. Um, but now, you know, it's now gonna come down to who's able to have a better, a better spread, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if Kwakwan so has the regional reach, but they say in elections, it depends on the people you're able to bring, because no one man wins an election. It's a collection mm. of people, you know. So it depends on who, that's why I say it depends on how they manage the process. So if they manage the process, let's assume that they manage the process where Kwakwansu emerges and there's no problem in the PDP. So you have each person, Bukola Saraki is strong in Kwara. Um, David Mack is strong in the part of Benue. Um, Mwike is strong in Rivers. And like that, you know, you bring the chips together and if they fall in for him, you have, we have an election uh, on our hands. But if that doesn't happen, Kwakwansu doesn't stand a chance against Buhari. So, let me, let me yeah. see if I can pull you home uh, yeah. before we leave. Yeah. Let's talk about your home state, uh, Delta, Delta State. Yeah. Uh, the former governor, Dr. Udwaha, is now in the APC. Mm -hmm. And uh, James Manager is still going, again, he's still interested in going back to the Senate, uh, representing the PDP. And uh, Governor Konwa definitely is, you know, getting stronger and stronger by the day within the P party. Uh, how do you see... <laughs> How do you see uh, the elections for the senator seat in Delta? In Delta State. Um, you know, before I, you know, let me just go back a bit. You see, um, in the in Delta South, you have four major ethnic groups. groups. You have the Isokos, the Jaws, the Chekiris, and the Robos. But in the Central. Delta Central, you have more of robos. So you're talking of, you know, um, sharing, you know, each ethnic group taking turns based on the power sharing arrangement that they have in the state. You take out the robos, but they already have representation in the center. So you have these three, sen these three groups. groups in this senatorial district. Now, in 1999, when it started, it was an issue. They have an understanding that power must go. So it moves. It moves. 
I think Senator Stella Omo was the first that represented the zone. She did one term to 1999 to 2003, and manager became senator. So he's been in the Senate since 2003. And um, when manager was doing his second term as a senator, Oudouin, Governor Oudouin was just elected governor. Understanding the power, you know, the, you know, how they structure power in Delta, I think there was an understanding that it would be wrong for the Chekiris to have a governor, governor and also have the senator. the senator representing that area. So they let it go. Manager did another turn. The understanding was that manager will allow somebody from the south, sorry, from Isoko, to at least interchange while Oduan was still governor. Because based on the balance of power in the state, there was no way a senator and a governor can come, the PDP arrangement, which I really didn't, don't, I really didn't care about. Now, when it, Udwan was finishing his tenure, wanted to run, but Jonathan told him not to, because the idea then, according to them, if you talk to the insiders, they said Jonathan had a plan for manager to become majority leader in the Senate if the PDP becomes a majority, but that didn't happen. happen. So Duan lost out at that time. So technically, manager has been in the Senate for, he's done four or five four times, times already. Yeah. yeah. And now Duan <laughs> wants to run, and, and the party, for some reason, is not allowing him as a former governor, you know, giving him the privilege which naturally would mean managers stepping down. Well, I, I think that's a fine place uh, for us yeah, to wrap so this up. Uh, uh, well, well, yeah, let's yeah. Uh, see how it uh, pans mm -hmm. out in 2019. Yeah. Many thanks, Austin, for spending time with us in Political Thank studio. you for having me.